Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we are gonna be showing you how to play Tiny Epic Pirates. So this is uh, the most recent, I think, most recent release from the Tiny Epic series. There might be one that's come after it or that is getting ready to fulfill or something like that, but this is a very recent one. I believe it came out in 2021. Uh, it's a really cool one. As you can see, I have the player mat um, for, for this. So there's gonna be some um, upgraded stuff in this video, but all the rules, of course, are going to apply whether you have the upgraded stuff or not. So we're going to get down to that in just a minute. Before we do, I want to mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. This is a great website where you can buy, sell, and trade games. They have a great selection to choose from if you're just trying to, you know, get the perfect collection. They have the stuff you're looking for. Also, if you're looking to sell games, they will buy games from you. And, you know, instead of selling six games to six different people, sell them all to one place, ship them all to one place, Board Game Co. And of course, if you have a trade list set up over on Board Game Geek, take your Board Game Geek username, go to the Board Game Co. website, drop your Board Game Geek username into their website. It will then compare your trade list with their stock, build a custom trade list right there on their website, makes it very easy to, to facilitate a trade. Click the link on the description below so they know I sent you over there. Board Game Co. makes it easy to buy, sell, and trade your way into a better collection. Now, before we get on the table, I do want to mention these how to play videos are a bit time consuming to make. This, you know, this channel has become its own hobby for me. It is a hobby within the board game hobby for me, but it is very time consuming and we do have a Patreon. So if the any of these instructional videos that we make, you know, we make it for Tiny Epic Pirates, we have one for Mage Knight, we've got it for Kingdom Death, we've got it for Azul, you know, all range of games. Go check out our Patreon, see if you feel like supporting the channel just a little bit monetarily. That way is something that's right for you. If not, no worries, keep watching. We're gonna get down to the table right now and I'm gonna teach you Tiny Epic Pirates. In Tiny Epic Pirates, the goal of the game is to be the first pirate to bury three treasures. There are two resources in Tiny Epic Pirates the players will need to manage. Gold is tracked with numbers on the left side of the legend mat. Players, will slide their doubloon up or down as they gain or lose gold. A player may never have more than 13 gold. Any gold gained in excess of that is considered lost. Likewise, gold may never go below zero. Gold can be gained by sinking merchant ships, trading booty at markets, searching for it at sea, and from the player's legend mat. Gold is spent by burying your treasure. Booty is managed using the wooden booty crates. Each color cube is one of four different types of booty. These are placed directly in pirate ships as they are plundered, stolen from sinking ships, or found on the open sea. Each pirate ship, as you can see, can hold three booty cubes. Merchant ships can hold one. To begin the setup, the player must first set up the sea. They do this by shuffling all 16 map cards and randomly placing them in a 4x4 grid, as you see here. The player then shuffles all the search tokens and begins placing one face down on each map card. Any leftover after all the map cards are filled are returned to the box. Next, give each player a legend mat placed on the left and a helm mat placed on the right. If you have the player mats, you don't need these cards as the player mat covers both sides. Each player gets a pirate ship in their color, a legend token, which they place bloodied side down on the indicated space on their legend mat, one captain, four deckhands, five order tokens, one random captain card, and one gold doubloon and three treasure tokens. The legend token is placed on this bottom space on the legend mat with the bloodied side face down. The gold doubloon is placed on the one space, indicating the player starts with one gold. Place the three treasure tokens at the bottom of the legend mat. 
Place one deckhand on its matching space on the legend mat. Shuffle the order tokens and then randomly place one face up in each space of the wheel. Place the captain meeple on the hideout space. Place the remaining three deckhands, one each, on each of the empty assignment spaces. Place the market within reach of all players. Put all booty cubes in the booty bag and then draw one at random to fill in these spaces on the market. This assigns the initial value of each type of booty. There could be no duplicates here. There must be one of each color. Take the two port tokens and put them on opposite corners of the map. Place one merchant ship at one port facing the opposite port and the other merchant at the other port facing the opposite port. Each merchant ship is then given one randomly drawn booty. The players now need to create the merchant deck. Take all the eight value merchant cards and place them face down, then six, then four on top of that, and finally two on top of that. Draw the top two merchant cards and assign them to each merchant ship. If playing without the player mat, these can be placed under the market for their assigned merchant ship. If playing without the player mat, these can be placed under the market for their assigned merchant ship. Shuffle the crew deck face down and then draw three crew from the deck and place them face up. Next, choose the first player, which can either be the youngest player or randomly chosen. The first player then places the Navy ship in either corner that does not have a merchant ship. Starting with the first player and going clockwise, each player then chooses any map card with an unoccupied cove and places their pirate ship on the cove to indicate they begin the game hiding out. Cards with coves are marked with this anchor symbol and the cove will be near the anchor. Then starting with the first player and going clockwise, each player selects which side of their captain card they plan to use first. The differences are gonna be the dice at the top, which are used in battle, and the bonus actions found at the bottom of the card. Make sure the three dice and the surefire tokens are within easy reach of all players. Finally, each player starts the game with one booty placed on their pirate ship based on the booty's value in the market. The first player gets the least valuable booty. The second player gets the three value booty. And if there were three and four players, it would continue up the chart. To begin a player's turn, they first advance their captain clockwise on their helm mat's wheel to choose their captain's order for the turn. The player must always advance their captain clockwise at least one space. Moving one space on the wheel is always free, but players may skip spaces if they choose to by placing a deckhand on the skip space. These deckhands may be taken from any of the four deck assignments at the bottom of the helm mat, and this may be done multiple times. A player may never move all the way to the space they started at, even if they have enough deckhands to reach it. Also, a player never needs a deckhand to skip the hideout space. Any spaces that already have deckhands from a previous turn may be skipped again. When one of these spaces is skipped or moved onto, the player immediately moves the deckhands onto any deck assignment. Deckhands moved from the wheel to an assignment in this way cannot then be used to skip more spaces in the same turn. Any number of deckhands may be placed into the same assignment. For each deckhand in rigging, the player gains one additional movement when sailing. Each deckhand in cannons gives the player one additional damage when battling, and each player in extort gives the player one gold when the captain crosses the ship line. 
repair is where a deckhand is placed when the ship is jostled. While in repair, they may not be assigned to other assignments unless a reassigned bonus action or hideout order is used. However, they still can be used to skip spaces. After the player chooses their captain's order and assigns deckhands, the player may sail their pirate ship as many map cards as they are allowed. This is determined by the movement noted in the player's legend level plus one per deckhand in rigging plus any search tokens that grant additional movement. So, if the player was currently level one, a sea dog on the legend card, they have one movement. Then if they had one deck hand assigned to rigging, they would have one additional movement. And if they had this search token, they could then discard it for two additional movement for a total of four movement. The player may then sail across any number of map cards up to their total movement. The player's sail path must be to map cards orthogonally adjacent. Once done, the player places their pirate ship in the center of the final map card, making sure not to cover any islands. A player may freely sail into and out of map cards with other ships without any penalty. When a player sails their pirate ship onto a map card, with a storm, the ship gets jostled. It's possible this will force a deckhand out of rigging, which will reduce the total movement and could prevent the player from reaching their destination. If the player sails into multiple storms, they will get jostled for each one, but jostling only occurs when entering a map tile with a storm. So let's discuss getting jostled for a moment. A ship can get jostled either from storms or from losing an attack. If there are deckhands on rigging, cannons, or extort, the player chooses one deckhand and moves them to repair. If no deckhands are on any of those three assignments, the player instead moves any one deckhand from the wheel onto repair. If all deckhands are already on repair, the player does not get jostled from losing an attack. However, if all deckhands are in repair, the player may not sail into a storm. After sailing, the player may execute their captain's order, which they previously chose. Let's take a look at these in detail. If the players are on a map tile with this icon, that means there's a settlement there. If the players chose plunder as their captain's order, they immediately draw booty crates from the booty bag and load them to their ship. The number of crates is dependent on the number of crates shown here. So in this case, two. A player's pirate ship can hold a maximum of three cubes. If there's no room for a cube, they may discard the drawn cube or discard a cube already on their ship and replace it with the new one. Either way, the discarded cube is returned to the bag. Trade allows the player to sell booty from their ship at the market for gold. While on a map card with a market icon, as you see here, the player may sell the indicated booty. In this case, purple cubes, which is rum. The player may trade up to three of the same booty in a single trade. In this case, the player only has one, and so they will trade the one. Each type, as we've mentioned, has a gold value determined by its position on the market. In this case, the player traded one purple cube, so they'll get five gold for it. Traded booty is returned to the bag, and then the player drops the traded booty to the bottom of the value column and moves all other cubes up the track. If the player sold booty that was already at the lowest value, it simply stays there. If the player chose to crew up, they get to add one face-up crew member to their crew. A player may have at most four crew cards at any time. The captain does not count against this crew limit, by the way, and when a crew member is taken from the row, it immediately is refilled. If the player wishes, before choosing a crew member, they may spend one gold to put the current face-up crew members at the bottom of the stack and refill the crew. However, this may only be done once per turn. If the player already has a full crew of four cards, they may discard one of their crew to the bottom of the deck and replace it with a new crew member. The captain may never be discarded. 
However, while a captain may never be discarded, once per game, the player may mutiny. A mutiny may occur when the player takes the crew up action and may occur whether or not the player actually takes on a new crew member. The player flips their captain over, which will give them access to this captain's specific dice and bonus actions. The player also flips over their legend token to the bloodied side to help them remember they've already mutinied this game. Search allows the player to take a face down search token from the map tile and gain its benefit. Tokens with an exclamation point like this one are resolved immediately and discarded, while tokens with a clock symbol like this one are added to the player's play area and may be used later on this turn or future turn. They are usable one time and then discarded. Attack allows the player to attack another pirate ship or merchant ship that's on the same tile as they are. The player cannot attack the navy ship ever. If multiple ships are on the same map card, the player chooses which one to attack. The player's goal in attacking is to deal more damage than the ship they're attacking. A player's damage total is determined by first rolling the number of dice indicated by their legend level, either 2 or 3. They then compare the results to the symbols listed on the top of their captain card, as well as any crew cards they have. For each match, they deal one damage. So in this case, the four doesn't match anything, but the two matches a two here and a two here, so the player dealt two damage. The player may then discard one or more surefire tokens to set one already rolled die to the face of their choice. So maybe another two. The player may adjust one die for each token discarded. Also, if any deckhands are on cannons, this adds one damage. And if any crew have this damage symbol, it adds the indicated amount of damage as well. When attacking a merchant ship, the amount of damage the merchant ship deals is shown on its current merchant card. If the player successfully sinks the merchant ship, they collect the booty carried by the merchant ship, as well as gaining the gold indicated by the merchant ship card. They then discard this merchant card from the game and replace it with a new one from the deck. The merchant ship is moved to a port that is the furthest from the player. If ports are equidistant from each other, the player may choose which one to place it in. A new booty cube is randomly drawn from the bag and placed in the merchant ship. If the player sinks an eight damage merchant ship, they are no longer able to replace the card and instead just reset the ship as normal, but keep using the same card. Also, sinking any merchant ship with this symbol causes the player to increase their legend level, assuming they are playing with the indicated number of players. If the player actually dealt less damage than the merchant ship, they get jostled, but they do gain one surefire token. If the player tied with the merchant ship, they do not get jostled, but do still gain a surefire token. Whether the player ties or deals less damage than the merchant ship, the ship itself does not sink and remains where it is. When attacking another player, both players roll their indicated number of dice and whichever player deals more damage wins. Damage totals in this case are determined the same as if the player were attacking a merchant ship. The player who wins advances one legend level, but they do not steal cubes from the other player and they do not gain any gold from the other player. The player who lost is jostled, but also gains a surefire token. And in the case of a tie, both players simply gain a surefire token. Finally, let's talk about hiding out. In order to use the captain's order hideout, the player must be on a tile with a cove that is not already occupied by another pirate ship. Remember, coves are marked with the anchor symbol. The player places their ship over the cove, and a cove may only ever hide one pirate at a time. The player may then freely arrange their deckhands however they wish. This includes taking deckhands from the wheel and from repair. The player may then take any of their deckhands and move them into any deck assignments. Keep in mind, any deckhands placed on extort will immediately earn one gold since the captain just passed the ship line. An important part of a player's strategy will be using the bonus actions found at the bottom of their captain and crew. Bonus actions are triggered when certain captain's orders are executed, in this case, search or trade. 
anytime the leftmost icon is the current captain's order, any icons to the right of it on that card may be executed. The player may trigger bonus actions even if they did not actually execute the captain's order, as long as their captain is on that order. Remember, bonus actions are always optional. Most bonus actions are resolved after the captain's order is completely resolved, but the exception is reroll, as you see here, as it occurs during the attack order. If a bonus action is a duplicate of a captain's order, they are resolved just like the captain's order, but do not trigger additional bonus actions. Players always take their captain bonus actions before the crew bonus actions, and captain bonus actions must be resolved from left to right. After taking any captain bonus actions, the player then resolves their crew bonus actions, and these may be taken in any order. But as usual, each bonus action must be fully resolved before beginning the next. I'm not going to go through in detail each bonus action, but I do want to explain the berry bonus action since this is a pretty important one for the game. When a player triggers the berry bonus action, if they want to use it, they must be on a map tile with an empty berry site as indicated here. The player then spends the gold indicated, in this case 13 gold, and they place one of their treasure tokens over the berry icon. If the navy ship is on the map card, treasure cannot be buried there. Also, only one treasure may be buried per site, so if a different treasure is already there, the player cannot bury treasure there. Once a player has buried all three of the treasures, the end game is triggered. After the player executes their captain's orders and triggers bonus actions, the player checks if their captain has crossed the ship line. If so, they first gain one gold for each deckhand and extort, and second, the merchant ships and navy ship will now sail. The sailing of these ships is performed by the player to the right of the active player. First sail the orange merchant ship by moving it one space closer to its indicated port, and then do the same with the green merchant ship. Each sails one movement toward their targeted port. When sailing, Keep the ship pointed in the direction it's moving, that way there's no confusion. The player may choose which map tiles the merchant moves onto as long as it moves toward its targeted port with each movement. Remember, when the merchant ship reaches its indicated port, it will replace the booty it currently has with a new one, and it will turn around and go towards the other port. Also, merchant ships are unaffected by storms. After sailing the merchant ship, the player now sails the navy ship toward the active player. Its movement is based on the number of treasure chests the active player has buried. Currently, the active player has buried zero treasure chests. So as you see here, zero treasure chest, it moves to movement. The navy will always sail towards the active player even if they are hiding in a cove, and it will stop on the active player's map card. The navy is not affected by storms, if the Navy enters the same map card as the active player, it stops moving and attacks the active player unless the active player is hiding in a cove. The Navy will only ever attack the active player and ignores all other pirates. When the Navy attacks, it automatically wins. The player's pirate ship is jostled, but unlike normal jostling, this time they must move all their deckhands, including any on the wheel, into the repair spot. The player does not gain surefire tokens when attacked by the Navy. Once the current player has resolved crossing the ship line, if applicable, that's the end of their turn and the next player in clockwise order begins their turn. When the player wins a battle against another player's pirate ship or sinks certain merchant ships, they immediately advance their legend token by one. With each new level, the player immediately gains one-time bonuses and may also increase the number of movement the player receives and the number of dice they roll when attacking. The player may receive gold, a surefire token, or an extra deckhand. Once the legend token reaches the final level, the player no longer receives bonuses even if they would gain more legend. When a player has placed their third and final treasure token, the end of the game is triggered. Continue playing until all players have had an equal number of turns, then the game ends. The player who buried all three treasures wins the game, but if multiple players have buried all three treasures, then the player with the highest legend wins the game. If still tied, the player with the most gold wins the game. 
and if still tied, the player with the most booty currently on their ship wins the game. If still tied, players enjoy a shared victory. So there you go. That's how you play Tiny Epic Pirates. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out our Patreon. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell. Like the video. All that good stuff. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.